is mom and we are talking about how we left a cult. Now, Ginger Duggar is, her book has just come out about the cult-like family situation that she was in. And I thought, you know what? Everyone keeps hollering at us because, you know, we get on all these different religions. Well, this time we're getting on our own religion um, because that's what that is. It's a religion and it is not what we are called to do as Christians. And so we want to talk about how we were in this cult and how we got out of it. Well, there's a and difference between, I hate, didn't mean to interrupt you, a difference between religion and relationship. With Jesus. Remember that yep. all through what we're saying. There's a difference between religion and relationship. Yep. All right. So most of you know the Duggars, and I'm sure if you haven't seen the Duggars, you've probably been buried somewhere <laughs> because they've been around for what, almost 20 years now. And um, as part of their religion is um, you can't wear pants. Women can't wear pants. They must wear dresses. Women have to have long hair. Kids are homeschooled. The mom has to stay at home. Now, we think that moms should stay at home, but it's not that women have to stay yeah, at home. Um, what are some other things? Uh, you know, you have to read the Bible and pray for so, for so long. Every day you have mm -hmm. to go to church so many times a day, so many weeks. You can only use the King James Bible. All right, this is some of the Bill Gothard teachings that he has been teaching for many years. And this is some of the teachings that our families have given into and my parents came from. And even my brother and I got in a little bit at our church when we were growing up. And so we wanna talk about how do you get out of that? What is it? How do you identify it? Is it actually a problem? Is it biblical? And how do we get out of that? How did we get out of it, mother? <laughs> <laughs> well. You have to have good discernment. I think that's the bottom line for yeah. everything like this. And discernment is, it's being, what, what happens is Satan's really good at deceiving, you know, and he takes the truth, something that sounds like the truth, and he twists it. Mm -hmm. Just ever so slightly. It sounds kind of good, but it's not what the Bible's really saying. Mm -hmm. And you have to be really careful on you know, all these things, if something doesn't feel quite right to you, you need to listen to that. And I don't think people are listening to that instinct, to the Holy Spirit inside of them telling them, there's something wrong here. Look these things up in the Bible. Where does it say that uh, women can't wear pants in the Bible? It says that they're supposed to dress like women and dress modestly, but it doesn't say that they have to, yeah. that they can't wear pants. No. And so you need to be careful. And here's a good story where this is where we... and. I never was into it quite so much. Uh, the church I grew up in, and it just seemed like they didn't push this type of stuff. But my husband was very, very much. I mean, it. we had to struggle the first year of our marriage mm -hmm. because he was so caught up in this stuff and everything. And it really, it affected his whole life. Mm -hmm. That's part of what I think, you know, mm -hmm. caused him to leave us and that type of thing. But anyway, um, we went to a church and we liked the church. We really enjoyed it and everything. And we got a new pastor at this church. And he went and announced at church, well, my husband, it was back in this early 70s where the guys were starting to grow mustaches, you know, and little beards. And my husband had this short little beard and a mustache. he just grown it, you know, and it, he kept it nice and trimmed and neat. And, looked, and he wore a suit to church every morning. Not that that would matter anyway. No, no. But, <laughs> but that's what he did, you know. And... So the pastor, this new pastor, gets up and announces that nobody will be able to hold any kind of a position in church if he has a mustache or a beard. And he looked directly at my husband. See, my husband was playing the organ, the piano, lead, helping with leading the singing sometimes, did, did the choir. He did all the music stuff, mm -hmm. all the music. And it was obvious that he was looking at my husband. <laughs> And we went through a struggle. My husband did it just like the scriptures say. That's why I say do the scriptures. He went and talked to the pastor. The pastor said, no, you have, you can't wear a beard. You're not supposed to. And my husband even showed him the scriptures in the Bible of all the men that wore beards. So then when that didn't work, he took two deacons with him to the pastor again. No, you will not hold any position. And then he publicly humiliated my husband by calling him out in front of half the people at church 
telling, I mean, he didn't even do this in a nice, kind way. Now, so we realized, and I'm so thankful, it was, it was really an amazing thing because my husband was going to, kind of going to rebel and go play the piano anyway that morning because the pastor said, you will not. I'm going to drag you out of the church. This is how bad it was. If you go up there to play, I'm going to drag you out of the church. And my husband said, this is wrong what you're doing. And he was going to kind of rebel, but we knew you shouldn't rebel against the pastor. So we didn't want to commit another sin. And so we finally, he was halfway down the aisle and he turned around uh, another uh, good friend taught, walked up to him and whispered something to him. Turned, he turned around, and he and I walked out of the service, and we drove straight to another church, and it was the best thing that ever happened to us. That was the best church I've ever been in. And it was like, God, sometimes when these things happen, you've got to realize God is leading you to something better. You, At that point in our life, you would never leave a church no matter what the circumstances. Mm -hmm. You stayed in your church. It was unheard of. And, but we did for the first time. So... This is the type of thing you've got to be aware of. Mm -hmm. And when you said something's wrong and something really doesn't go against the Bible, I don't care if your family's been in the same church for 25 generations. It can get poisoned. And it, if it's not going by the Bible, you have yeah. got to get out. Because all of this is based on your works. It's all based on works. What now, the outside looks what like does, and works. Yeah, what does the Bible say about this? Okay, read Ephesians real quick, Mom. Oh. And then we're going we're gonna to talk about this just a little bit here. Well, I was going to read it. In Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, it says, for grace. For by grace. For by grace. Now, I want to, why I'm hesitating here is I want, I want you to know what grace is. Because people don't, we read over this stuff really quick, and I don't think people totally understand. Grace means an undeserved gift. Of some, now, I want you to think about this. Undeserved. It's something that you have not done to deserve it. You can't do anything to deserve it. And it's a gift. You don't work to get a gift. I don't give Tara a birthday present and say, now I want you to go clean your kitchen and clean your my bedroom or whatever because it's a gift. You, she doesn't have to work for this. So by grace, remember this, it's an undeserved gift. By, for by an undeserved gift, basically. You have been saved through faith. Now, we, I, we hear a lot of people that say, oh yeah, Jesus was a good man. And I believe in Jesus, you good know, teacher, good yeah. teacher, good prophet, whatever. And I do believe in Jesus. But no, it says by faith. Faith is in your heart. You believe something you can't see. You believe it in your heart, not with your mind. Usually with your mind, it's something you can reason out and see. So just listen to this. It's an undeserved gift that you can be saved by with faith. Only what's in your heart. And that not of yourselves. I mean, how clear can these words be? Why can people not understand this? That not of yourselves. In other words, you can't do it. Why are you working at this? You can't do it. It is a gift of God. A gift, again, it says it's a gift. And why is it? Because. <laughs> not of works. How much clearer can these words get? Not of works. And why not? Why did he not allow you to work for it? lest anyone should boast, pride. Pride is one of the biggest sins. And if you're doing your religion, your you know denomination pushes works, it's pride. And that is like the works, yep. worst sin. And so, okay, so let's talk about what some of the works that we have, that we have um, experienced. Okay, women wearing dresses only. Women... Um, Women not working outside the home. Men not wearing beards. This is why people say, you know, people are always so, um, they, they're so in awe and so in uh, thralled with the Amish and how they're so, oh, they're oh, it's just so wonderful. They're Amish. They're so nice. Actually, the Amish religion is not a Christian religion. It is based only on works. It is based on what they wear. It is based on what they drive. It is based on their beard on what they wear on their heads. It is based on how they work. It is based on their what technology they don't use. It is all works. When someone is telling you, you can't decipher the Bible for yourself, that is that the is, biggest red flag yeah, yeah. right there that you are in a cult. Mm -hmm. That is the biggest red mm -hmm. flag right there. If your priest 
or your pastor or your elder, whatever it's called in your religion, tells you you can't decipher the Bible for yourself, that right there tells you you are in a cult. Yeah. Right yeah. there. That tells you. If they say you have to do these certain things, why? Because we are saved by grace through faith alone. So that we do not get the credit yeah. for what we have done. It is only through Jesus Christ dying on the cross for our sins that we are saved. We have done nothing and we cannot do anything afterwards. We cannot work out our salvation. Our salvation is either finished or it's not. You can definitely know if you are going to heaven or if you're, if you're not. I definitely know that as a Christian, because I have given my life to Christ, it doesn't matter if I sin because if I am a true Christian, I will feel bad. I will be convicted of that sin. I will repent, but my sins are already forgiven. And when I get to heaven, they're not going to be remembered anymore. How many, how many things do people do and they don't even know they're sinning? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And God has already said he will forgive us for those sins. Mm -hmm. And so living in a cult like this is all about what man can do in the Pharisees. The Bible talks about the Pharisees all the time. And boy, did we have that growing up. Yeah. And you know, well, I, we still get it now. Actually, every day we get emails from Pharisees. Yeah, yeah we day. do. And you, and I challenge you guys, everything we're saying here, you look up Look it up yourself. I'm good. And when I edit and this, I all the references are going to be on the screen. And you, you know what? It. And if you're afraid to look it up yourself. Yeah. But I am not put, I am not putting the, the whole verse on there. Do you know why I don't put the verses on my videos except for certain things? Because I want you to go to the Bible you look and up. look it up yourself. And if you're afraid yeah. to, this is an interesting thing too. We get a lot of people that get very upset with us. You, can, you can't even begin to imagine. And they say, well, I want you to read this and I want you to read that. And first of all, we have studied this. Tar and Mike have really studied this, you know. Mm -hmm. And they have read all these different things that people say, well, I want to send you this book or this or that. And they've either read them, but even if they haven't, Tara doesn't mind reading them. Mm -hmm. She reads them with no problem. And you know why we can read them with confidence? Because we are so secure in what we believe and what we do because it's based on the Bible. Yep. We're secure in that. We have no problem reading it, all yeah. of these things. And none of it's ever, ever changed. We've yeah. gotten tons of it. It's never changed our faith, our belief system, nothing. But these same people, guess what? Tar says, can I send you a Bible or can I send you this to read? No, I don't want to read your stuff. Or they'll send me videos and they'll say, well, you need to watch this testimony of so-and-so and how he was a Protestant and he became a Catholic. I'm like, okay, that's fine. I said, actually, I have already seen that video. Here's a video for you to look at that tells why we don't believe the Catholic traditions will get us to heaven. Oh, no, I can just tell by the, by the title that it's lies. You know, if, if you want me to read it, which I already have, I've read the Catholic Catechism. I've read the Book of Mormon. I know what these things say, and I know how they contradict the Bible. Those are works of man. Those are only traditions that are man-made. They are not actually from the Bible. You, you take everything that you do and Compare you it. look it in the look it up and see if where it shows mm -hmm. it to do in the Bible. Yeah. I, I challenge you to do that. And I bet you a lot of you will be afraid to do that. Yeah. Because you know and And Jesus, that's how we got out of it. My mom and my dad looked at what their parents were saying and compared it to the Bible. So that I knew to do that myself so that when I was a married woman and I did something that my grandmother didn't agree with, and she said, You must obey me. And I was like, excuse me? I said, no, I do not have to obey you. I have to honor my mother and father, but I do not have to obey you or really honor your grandparents. It doesn't say anything about honoring your grandparents, but I said, the only person I have to obey and submit to is my husband. She couldn't say anything <laughs> after that. <laughs> but, but I knew the Bible did not say I had to submit to my grandparents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. And you have to, you need to check it out. And. You know, I was thinking, people, I don't know why people are so afraid to read the Bible. Well, because it's the truth. And the thing is, everybody says, well, I love Jesus. We all love Jesus. You know, um, I'm a Christian, and I love Jesus, and I believe in Jesus. 
but yet you're afraid to read the Bible. And the Bible, to me, is God's love letter. Yep. It's God's love letter. And you know, when my husband got shipped overseas, uh, he was gone for a year. And we were just been married a year, and he got um, was gone for a year. And he would write me, thank goodness, every single day. And I would sit on my front steps on the porch waiting for the mailman for that letter to come. And I would grab that letter, run into my bedroom, tear it open as fast as I could. I would read it not once, not twice. I would read it over and over and over. I would try to read between the lines. I'd try to absorb everything. I would hold it. I would hold it against me. That's what because we it was from my bridegroom. Yeah. It was from my bridegroom. And this is from our bridegroom. Yeah. And it's from God and Jesus. And why would you not want to follow that? You know, I asked my husband's opinion on something when he was gone, and he would give it to me in that letter, and I would follow his advice. Yep. Why can't, why do you not, this is a good indication of how much you love the Lord, and if Jesus really is in your heart, because if you're not wanting to read his love letter, you're not in love with him. Yep. If you're feeling guilty, there's a difference between conviction and guilt. If you're feeling guilty, if you have fear in your life, I'm yep. afraid if I don't do this much, if I don't do that, I'm God's not going to get this. Love me. I'm not, I'm not going to get this level mm -hmm. to heaven. I'm not going to do this. If I don't do more, if I don't do more, if I don't spend five no. hours reading my Bible every day, God's going to be mad at me. If you feel anxious, worried constantly, do you find yourself taking medication to try to calm yourself down? Getting a glass of wine in the evening to calm yourself down? Mm -hmm. Going shopping because you're so stressed out? Yep. You think about this stuff. Because if you love the Lord, now that doesn't mean we don't, as a Christian, and having Jesus in our heart, that doesn't mean we don't have these things, same things sometimes, but we know what's happening, and we don't like it, and so we start reading scripture on fear. Uh -huh. We start reading scripture where it says, don't be anxious or worried about anything. We read scriptures when we're, burnt, we're having burnout from trying to teach Sunday school, sing in the choir, go to Wednesday night service, Sunday night service, no, yeah. all that stuff. We would, we would spend no less than 20 hours a week at church alone. That didn't include the stuff uh -huh. we did at home. Yep. And you have burnout. Okay, if you're having burnout, study the Bible on works. Uh -huh. Don't be like the Pharisees. Jesus yep. was, if he was so angry, the only people he was ever angry at, and I mean really angry, was the Pharisees. And you know what they were? They carried the little box of scripture on their thing. They dressed in these fancy robes and wanted had bells and all this other stuff on them. They had the outward display of perfection. But inside, he said, you're like, what is it? Wash, whitewashed tombs. They were dead inside. You may have everything together on the outside. You may go to church. You fight like the Dickens with your husband all the way to church, but you got all your hair done, your makeup on, shaved, you know, all dressed up and everything, and you walk in, but inside you're fuming at each other. That's what the Bible says is works, and you shouldn't be doing that. And look at what you're focusing on. I'm going to address this once again because it's so popular right now, but, you know, the show The Chosen. <laughs> I, I do not recommend that show. Any Christian should not be watching it and they should not be recommending it, period. I will leave links in the description on videos that help explain and all that. I'm not gonna go into it, I've gone into it on many shows, but look at how many people with The Chosen, are they quoting the show or are they quoting the Bible? Yeah. Are they talking about the show or are they talking about the Bible? Mm -hmm. Are they commenting for the show or are they commenting for the Bible? Yeah. Think about that. Are they spending as much time reading their Bible as they are watching the show? And, you know, it, it's really sad that Satan uses these things, but we know that in the end times we are going to be deceived, and that is one of the ways we are going to be deceived, yeah. is things looking like they're Christian and they're not. And don't get me wrong. What Satan means for evil, God can use for good. And I know that there are things like the Holocaust, where God used it for good later. And the same thing with the chosen. He can use something that Satan is putting out for good. I understand that. But 
Look at where your focus is on these things. And you, even though he can use it for good, for something else, you will have to live with the consequences. Yes. I always think how many people are going to get up into heaven and they're going to be appalled at how often they had led somebody astray by just their words. Yeah. Let yeah. alone their actions in yeah. the things they did. You be careful. No, it's not by our works. But there are things that, you know, mm -hmm. God asks us to do after we're saved. Yep. We're supposed to do things that show mm -hmm. and that type of thing. Yep. And guys, the time is getting close when Christ is going to be coming back soon. And that's why we keep teaching you the Bible because we want you to know the truth. So if you want more information, please go watch this video next on the rapture where I did an interview with Generation 2434. And we talked for an hour or two about the rapture of the church and answered your questions. Please visit us at livingonadime.com and we will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.